is Pastor Jeff here from Lake Moore United Methodist Church. Glad to uh, see you for our third installment of Bible Fun. Hope you're having a good time. I know you're learning about the 23rd Psalm and also Jesus, the Good Shepherd. When I was a, a little boy, somehow we won a picture of Jesus with sheep. And it's right up here. And uh, it was always a favorite. It hung in our house in uh, one of the rooms and reminded me of the, the care of Jesus. Thought you might like to see it. There's also a, another picture, which we're going to see here as well, of Jesus as a good shepherd who would rescue the sheep. Sheep that had got lost, the sheep that got somehow um, in, a, in a kind of a dangerous and, and troublesome place. Sometimes in life we get that way too. I think you're going to hear a little bit more about lost sheep today and the Good Shepherd. So uh, I hope you have a good time. hope you have fun with the lesson, the crafts, the other games. Hey, and it's always a good idea to share with other kids, uh, a friend, another, another member of the family. Uh, so hope you have a great time. We'll see you again in a week. Hello, and welcome to the third lesson on the 23rd Psalm. I am Mrs. K. For today's lesson, you will need a Bible, a pencil, and paper to take some notes. Let's turn to your Bible to Psalm 23. Um, Psalms is toward the middle of your Bible, and all the Psalms are numbered to make them easier to find. We will be learning about the third verse that is highlighted here. So you can pause the video and find your way, and then we will read this together. So let's read this Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, so this part of the psalm speaks of being led in paths of righteousness. What do you think when you hear the word righteousness? Listen to it again. Righteousness. I hope you see the word right in that righteousness at the beginning of that word. Righteousness means acting in according with divine or moral law, free from guilt or sin. Then say this, this means that the good shepherd leads his flock along the right paths. He knows the best way to go. A good shepherd leads his flock along paths that are safe to travel. He takes them to the best pastures and leads them on to the safest places to drink. But sometimes sheep wander away from the flock. In case you didn't know, sheep are not very smart. 
it is hard to understand why a well-cared-for sheep would want to leave its shepherd. When a sheep wanders away from the protection of the shepherd, it can be very dangerous for it. God's children sometimes behave like this too. When the children of God don't follow God's ways, but choose to do what they want to do instead, this can lead to all kinds of trouble. The Bible says, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. To go astray means to wander away from God in our thoughts and by our actions. But God sent his only son, Jesus, to be our good shepherd. He died for us so we could do the right thing and be saved from God's punishment for disobeying him. Then we can live with him for eternity. Jesus tells us to repent. That means turn away from going the wrong way and go the right way by following him. How do we learn what God wants us to do? By reading the Bible and listening to his word, of course. Let's read Matthew 18, verses 12 through 14. You can find this in your Bible. An interesting fact about sheep is that they feel safest in a flock of at least four or more. Listen to what Jesus says about wandering away from the flock. I will be reading from the International Children's Bible. So again, this is Matthew 18, verses 12 through 14. If a man has a hundred sheep, but one of the sheep gets lost, he will leave the other ninety-nine sheep on the hill. He will go to look for the lost sheep. And if he finds it, he is happier about it than he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that were never lost. I tell you the truth. In the same way, your Father in heaven does not want any of these little children to be lost. Isn't this a wonderful story? We are reminded that people like sheep do better when they live in a community of people who follow Jesus. Yet, Jesus loves us even when we wander away. But don't do that. Don't wander away from our loving Good Shepherd and his flock. Jesus loves you and wants you to follow him. That is the safest place to be. Now we will be looking at the second part of this verse, for his name's sake. What does reputation mean? Think about it for a minute. Reputation refers to the quality of someone, their distinctive nature and character, and how they behave and react toward others. The definition of reputation from the Webster's Dictionary says, overall quality or character as seen or judged by people in general. Why is it important to have a good reputation? I want you to think about that for a minute. You can pause the video and write some of your answers down on your paper. Some of the things that I thought of when I was thinking about why it's important for a good reputation is that you can be trusted. Another reason is people will ask you for your help. Another reason why it's good to have a, a good reputation is because people know that you will do what is right. You can give it good advice, that people will come to you for good advice. This part of Psalm 23 tells us that God leads us for his name's sake. In other words, God's good reputation is his character is at stake to do what he promises for those who who he loves, his sheep. What are some of God's qualities or characteristics that give him a good reputation? Again, I want you to write this down on your paper and think about it. Some of the things I came up with were, he's loving, God is caring, he's honest, he's a very good helper, 
and he's a wonderful problem solver. The Lord can be trusted to be our, God, our good shepherd. He is the one who leads us safely home. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This is what we have been studying today. I want you to put in your own words what you think that means. Rewrite this verse and pause the video for just a second. The way that I rewrote this in my own words is, God will show me the right way to go because he can be trusted. So that's what that verse 3 means. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Is the Lord your shepherd? The Bible says everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed our lesson. Hi there, this is Rich Cole, and I'd like to welcome you to Week 3's musical component of Lakemore United Methodist Church's 2021 Bible Fund Program. This week's song is For the Beauty of the Earth and it was written by Folliot S. Pierpoint in 1863, as he sat on a hilltop outside his native city of Bath, England, admiring the county view and winding Avon River. He was inspired so much to think about God's gifts in creation and in the church. We must remember that it rains on the just and the unjust alike, but despite life's hurdles and hardships, God's love is never ending, and so is his amazing grace. I hope you enjoy this rendition of For the Beauty of the Earth, as sung by the Lakemore United Methodist Church Praise Team. God bless you all. We'll see you next week. I'm Brenda, and today I'm going to show you how to make a box for your Psalm 23 phrase cards. You got the cards for verse 1 and 2 last week, and this week you're getting the, song, the cards for verse 3. You have in your kit the box. 
on the first week, you got a glue stick you're going to need. I don't know if this is a brand you got or not. A pencil will also come in handy to help hold the box down. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, along the dotted lines, your, your, the box is scored. That means it's got like a little crease in it. We're going to fold it on all of the folds, all the, the dotted lines. Tabs, tabs on the top, and then the top. Okay, so it's folded and it's going to go like that. The first thing we're going to do is put the, put the glue stick, this, this is the front, we're going to put the glue stick inside here and over here and then pull, pull it together. And that's where this pencil is going to come in handy to help help you push on it. I'm going to get my glue stick. It rolled away. No. If, as long as you have on the outside of one and the inside of the other, if you got them flipped around, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, get my pencil here. And I push it down so the pencil is pushing against the table. And let's see. While we're doing that, you may want to try saying your psalm. If you remember it all while you're waiting for that to hold down. Okay, after a little while, I'm going to do this. Now we have the two side flaps here. I'm going to put the back side in first, and then the two little ones, and then the front. The back is the side that has the church info, the front. So we do the outside of the back. And then I'm going to do both sides of the little ones. Get those down. And then the inside of the front. Again, we're going to use the pencil to stick in and push it down up against the table to hold it. And be patient. And then it's done. And then you can put your cards in. All right. See you later. Hi, I'm Brenda, and I'm going to show you how to play a game that's in your kit. It's something like the game Cootie, only we're going to build a sheep. Okay, you have four pieces of paper and your dice. The, the first one you need to roll is the body. After that, you can get either the legs and slide them under, or you can get the head. When you get the head, you turn it this way without the face. And then after you get the head, you can get the face and then flip it over. But you can't get the face before the head because there'd be nothing to put the face on. There you go. Have fun. Hi, I'm Brenda. Today, in the lessons we've been talking about how the good shepherd goes after the one sheep that strays away and that and leaves the rest behind 
That kind of reminds me of when you're blowing bubbles. Sometimes you get a whole bunch that kind of stick together, and sometimes one kind of drifts off. But I like chasing after that one. So when I saw bubble kits, I thought that would be great to give to you too. Now yours might have a different picture on the front. First thing you gotta do, you gotta take the snaps off here. And then you use scissors to open up the bottom. There's a foil pouch inside. You gotta open that up with a pair of scissors. And then inside, there's a double pouch of bubble solution. Use scissors to cut that apart, cut one open, pour it inside this Ziploc bag. And then, solution and make bubbles. Let's see how that works. Okay, let's see what happens with these bubbles. Oh, they're all going to <laughs> None of them are sticking together. We can still have fun chasing them. <laughs> Come on.